us today. We know you could be at any other church, but you chose Inspire, and for that, we are so very grateful. We will be having a special guest speaker today, Pastor Bill Wilson, and he's gonna be speaking the Word of God, and we cannot wait to have you guys involved in that. Please, 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 if you haven't made it yet, just make sure that you're uh, just uh, dwelling in here. Also, if you are a loved one, feel like you could sh that somebody could share or 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 or, or develop any type of feelings from this service, please make sure that you're liking and sharing and sending that to them because we want as many people involved in that as possible. So make sure you like, share, and comment on the YouTube and Facebook. Without with all that being said, I'm just gonna pray us in. God, thank you for this day. Thank you for giving us this amazing service. Ask you just be with us through the rest of our days, God, and just walk with us through the rest of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, guys, you guys have a great rest of the service. Praise the Lord, Inspire Church. Look, if you know we serve a mighty God and you've come to give him what's due, whether you're in the sanctuary or you join us at home, start to clap your hands like this. Come on, sing it with us.
need you to talk to me. Has the devil made it seem like that it was gonna be nothing but night? That you weren't gonna wake up to joy in the morning and you couldn't feel the presence of God. But what happened? The Bible says weeping may and but joy comes with the morning. Has he worked it out for anybody in here? Does anybody know him as your defender? So look, I need you to sing it as a testimony, say it like, what a mighty God I serve. What a mighty God I serve. And he's fighting, fighting, fighting. Yeah, 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 yeah. What a mighty God I serve. Y'all better sing it, yeah. What a mighty God I serve. And he's fighting for me.
moving among us this morning. The, the presence of God is here, amen. In this atmosphere, let's go directly before the throne of grace for a time of prayer. King Jesus, we thank you this morning. Father, we thank you for your presence that is, that is so tangible this morning. God, we thank you for all you're doing among us, God. We thank you that you, you come and you, you set us free, God, and you give us peace. God, we thank you for all that you do among us. God, we thank you for your love that is present in this room, God, that's removing every fear. God, you're breaking chains among us. God, we thank you for doing what only you could do. God, we thank you for your mercy, God, that are, that are for us and towards us this morning. Jesus, we thank you that your heart is deeply moved by your people's worship this morning. Lord, we can feel your response. We can feel you inhabiting our praises. And God, we bless your name for that this morning because you don't have to come, God. You don't have to send your presence. But God, we thank you that you do. There's, there's no place we would rather be than in your presence. Better is one day with you than a thousand elsewhere, God. Better is a time in a desert in your presence than to be in king's palaces. And Father, it's like we're in a river when we're in your presence, God. We have all we need. We have the sustenance we need, God. We have the resources we need, the peace, the protection, the healing in your wings, God. It's all in you, God, that truly our source of life, that it's in you that we live, breathe, and have our being, God, that we, we don't look to all else, God. We even in your presence start to forget about the problems we had earlier, the things that were so heavy and weighing us down, God. Your presence tends to captivate us and turn our attention, Father, because you're so high and lifted up. It forces us to look upon you, and Father, we thank you for all that you're gonna do, God. We thank you that, Father, you're still fighting our battles, and we, we have names on the screen this morning that represent families, and that it represents need, and God, we thank you that you see the need, and we thank you that you will meet the need. We, we thank you that you, there's resources in heaven to supply healing, to supply breakthrough, peace, abundance. And so, God, we believe for the release of miracles in their life this morning. We ask that the kingdom of heaven would be released in every hospital room across this city. God, we ask that the same spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead, God, would quicken these bodies that are represented on these screens. In Jesus' mighty name, for your glory, amen, amen, and amen. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 You may be seated. It is always a blessing and an honor to worship the Lord with you here at Inspired Church on a Sunday morning. If you're with us here for the very first time, whether in person or that's online, you'll see a QR code appear on your screen. And that QR code, if you would just scan it, you'll receive a link to your device that will give you more information on how to stay connected with us and receive regular updates of what we're doing here at Inspire. And the same would occur if you were to text the word guest to that phone number here at Inspire at this time in our service, we honor God with our giving. And so you're gonna see the ushers go throughout the congregation. They have with them the offering and the tithe envelopes. If you need one, just let them know with an uplifted hand. They'll distribute one to you. But if you're not giving in person or you happen to be here in person, but you're just not giving with an envelope or, 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 or in that method, we have five ways to give here at Inspire. Please choose the one that is most convenient for you. I just have one main announcement for you this morning. Uh, before we have our announcement video and before you give, and that is the Sister to Sister Ministry will be serving single moms here at Inspire Church on the second Sunday of every month from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. They'll be giving out free diapers, free food, and they'll have free child care. If you or you you need that, if you feel that you could benefit from this assistance or you know someone who could benefit from this, please let them know. Please come out. This ministry is such a power powerful, powerful ministry that the Lord is using to affect young women and really women of all ages that are single moms. So please come out if you would like, or if you know someone, bring them out every second Sunday from four to seven. Now the ushers will come back in just a moment. They'll collect the offering, but I'd like to pray over the offering just before you give. Jesus, we thank you. 
You're the Lord, our shepherd, and we shall not want. We thank you that wealth is not a problem in the kingdom of heaven. And Father, we thank you that as children of the king, neither will it be ours. God, we bless you. We honor you in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you as you give. We do have an announcement video for you. Inspired Church, my name is Gabby, and here are your weekly announcements. Men of Inspired Church, join us November 15th at 7 p.m. for a first of its kind class on personal evangelism. You don't want to miss this. We're going to be talking about theology of evangelism, strategies, and even methods of evangelism. It's something that we all need to get on one on one with other men. Join us November 15th, 7 p.m., for a very impacting and empowering time here at Inspired Church. Join us. Attention all young adults. I hope you guys are ready because this Sunday we will be continuing our series, The Good Counselor. So grab a friend and meet us here in the cafe at six o'clock. Can't wait to see you there. That's all the announcements we have for you today. Enjoy the rest of your service.
I think we should give the Lord a great resounding praise because his name is the name that is above every name, every name, every name. No matter what you might be facing, I want to encourage you by reminding you that you've already come through so much. The name of Jesus has brought you safe by the grace of God to where you are right now. And so the name of Jesus has covered and conquered the past, but that's not all. The name of Jesus is prevailing over everything you're facing right now. Somebody ought to give God some praise that's in the middle of a situation. And you don't know how you're going to get out of it, but I can assure you, you will, because God is for you. And I have great news for you. Not only does the name of Jesus deliver us from the past and take care of the present, but he's going to also make certain that you prevail in the future as well. And so you're not going to have a tomorrow where you're going to lose out. Amen. No matter what tomorrow looks like, God is on your side. And because you know that at the name of Jesus, every knee has got to bow, why don't you give God some praise in this building one more time? We love you, Lord. We magnify your name. We bless you today. We worship you this morning. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. More than words can say, we love you. And we bless you. Amen. And good morning, Inspire. How are you doing today? Great to see you in the Lord's house. Wave at somebody across the building and say, good to see you here. Amen. God bless you and you may be seated. And welcome to our online audience. I'm so glad that you're tuning in from wherever you may be watching this service from. We welcome you. We, we love you. We're glad you're here today. And I know that especially today, you are going to be greatly impacted by the Word of God. We have Dr. Bill Wilson here that I'll introduce in a moment. Amen. Yes, yeah, let's give him an applause, but we'll give him a proper welcome in just a minute. And... Uh, I want to say this in regard to last Sunday. Wow, that was amazing. We had a fall festival last Sunday afternoon and also did the trunk or treat for all of our kids. It was huge. We had thousands of kids. I'm so glad that you were here, that, that you came and that you volunteered. I don't know what we would do without all of you guys who volunteer and serve. I wanna give our volunteers a show of appreciation. Would you do that? Amen. You guys are amazing. And I wanna thank you for the hours you put into the kingdom of God, serving all the way from the parking lot into the building, the children's ministry, the young adult ministry, the, the youth ministry, music, worship, and all of the many, many different groups that we have that are going on, each of them ministering, prison ministry, the things that are happening that can transform lives. You just roll up your shirt sleeves and dive right in like it matters to you. And I know it does. And I know that God's going to reward you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I wouldn't want to pastor this church without all of you guys. You, you're just amazing. And I thank God for you. You know, and I keep saying this, this serving here has been the joy of my life. I'm in my 34th year as pastor here. And thank you for everything you have done. And you've not only supported here, you've supported the Bible schools overseas that we've built both in Africa, India, the many ministries there, the many graduates that we have from these, these schools. I think it's 3,500, no, 3,656. I keep reversing the number just in Africa alone. We could not do that without what you're doing. 
and you have been amazing. And so those of you at home, thank you for your support as well. And I want to mention that you will not want to miss this coming Wednesday night, Dr. Robert Pace, who is a professional counselor. He is a, 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 he's also a professor at Clear Lake, uh, well, the University of Houston of Clear Lake, I should say. He is an amazing amazing guy. Robert Pace has been on staff with us as our counseling pastor for many years, and he's going to talk about the search for significance this Wednesday night. He's been addressing the four great fears that people face, and trust me, it is relative to where you live. It is important information. You will be glad you're here. And now would you stand with me? We have someone here with us today that has, well, he has impacted me. I haven't known Bill for very long, but there was an immediate connection when we first met, and I love this guy. I don't know anybody that, when you talk to him, communicates passion the way that he does. And you know me, I'm about passion. I love what I do. I would not trade places with anybody in the world. I'm doing what I love. I haven't been to work in at least 34 years, amen, because I'm doing exactly what I enjoy doing and having the time of my life. And you guys are just amazing. It's been a joy to be connected to you. I found somebody else that feels about the same way I do, amen. And when he gets done, I mean, he's just ripped my heart out. And it, it just did open heart surgery without anesthesia. I didn't even go to sleep. He just reached in and ripped it out. And, and that last service was unbelievable, the word that he brought. Dr. Bill Wilson has been greatly used of God. He pastors the largest children's ministry in the world. Somewhere, I think, uh, just around 300,000 kids that he's ministering to now every week all over the world. And the stories he has to tell, they will touch you. And he has traveled the world communicating the value of being involved in the work of God and pursuing vision and pursuing your dream. When you hear Dr. Bill Wilson, you will want to roll up your sleeves if you haven't already and get to work. And if you have, you'll want to even do more. I want you to welcome with an inspired church welcome, Dr. Bill Wilson, as he comes to share his heart. Come and preach to us, amen. Come on, you can do better than that. He was here a few months ago and rocked the house. Thank you, my friend. Bless you.
Well, give the Lord praise. Come on. We haven't done it enough yet. You better. Let me add my welcome, welcome to all of you. Hey, a couple of you stuck around from the first service. Usually we run everybody off the first one. But uh, yeah, I, I said it in the first service, and I'll say it here. Because, and I, don't, I wish I got to say this more. Because if I don't know somebody, if I don't feel it, I don't say it. You know, because usually, let me tell you how this business works. All right? Pastor gets up, he says nice things about me. So then the guest speaker usually feels obligated to say nice things about him. <laughs> I'm 73 years old. Come on, Jesus. <laughs> I've been shot twice. I've had five concussions. I've been stabbed four times. I've been thrown off of a building. And I've worked with Christians for 50 years. <laughs> I don't know what's more traumatic. Getting shot by a sniper or working with Christians. So, if I ain't got nothing to say, I just get up and I preach. Because it's just easier. But, this place is not the case. He was exactly right. He didn't know me. When, I, when we were here, I don't know what it was, a couple months ago. And, but, you know, and I'm not going to be wooey on you here. Well, let me just explain something. Because this is 50 years talking. And some of you young people, if you're under 30, you just need to shut up and pay attention. <laughs> because you don't know nothing. I'm just saying, you can do with that whatever you want. But when the Holy Spirit is in the midst of something, something begins to change. You may not get it right away. You may not understand it right away. It's taken me 50 years of ministry to understand a lot of the things that I deal with now. Okay? See, some people, <laughs> when you saw me put the bulletproof vest on there, these sheriffs, these guys got nothing on me. Okay? <laughs> I love you guys. I appreciate y'all. But, uh, yeah, I got shot in the back by a Russian sniper a couple of years ago in Syria. And when you're laying in the desert and you don't know if that thing went through or not, so when I talk to you, it's not, it's not like some of these other guest preachers. I'm sure you've had some good ones. I'm sure you've had a bunch of sissies because <laughs> there's enough sissy preachers to go around. For, and I'm not even going to get into that. But so when I talk to you guys today, understand there is a vast level of experience um, that I talk to you from. Um, and that's my prayer is that somehow that comes through. So when I tell you that you are very fortunate to have that man sitting right there as your pastor, you better understand what I just said. When I tell you that this church is that lighthouse in this area and that God is using all of you and this church, you better get that. And when I tell you America, contrary to popular belief of some pinheads in the world today, is still the greatest country in the world, you better get that. You better get it. And if you don't believe that, I'm going to be at the back table. Please, come and have a discussion with me. Mm -hmm. I haven't been in a fight in the last two weeks where I got this. So I don't want to lose my touch. So please, come back and say something stupid. I'd love for you to. We'll put the sheriffs to work. Pastor, I love you, my friend. Thank you so much. Isn't he great? What a great... Thank you. Thank you. Good stuff. Well, I want you to see that video. I didn't know if you would be offended of me putting, putting my gun. That was me in the Philippines. When we go out at night, we all have to carry, and that's just part of it. So I hope you didn't get offended. But this is Texas. Everybody carries, right? Everybody owns a gun. So I love here in Florida. I love being here. In New York, we don't even get to carry guns. But uh, I'm working on that. All right. Hey, a couple of things. We'll be at the back table with you guys. I've only got a couple, couple of the bracelets left. 
I had some when I was with you guys several months back. These are made by the moms of some of our kids in the Philippines. They meet the garbage trucks in the morning and they'll get magazines, different color magazines. They'll cut them into strips, wet them, roll them up into these beads. One of them's got a dentist drill and she drills the center out and they take these and sell them on the street in Manila. And when I first saw this, I told them, I said, you need to send them to me. I will take them out and people want to get these so they can pray for you, pray for the kids. And since I've been doing this, we've had several of the moms that now for the first time ever, they are able because of folks that have just wanted one of these and just wanted to, to help them. They're getting their kids in school. They're providing two meals a day, which is a big deal living there. And it's because of this kind of stuff. All right. So thanks, guys. Thank you. And we don't have a lot of these left. So it's kind of a first come, first serve back there. Uh, this book was a big hit after the first service. This is the one where I've got, uh, this is based on the American colloquialism, the thousand pound elephant in the room. You know, it's that, it's that thing that, that's right in front of you, but nobody wants to talk about it. So I thought, hmm, I'm gonna get 50 church elephants. You know, topics that people don't wanna talk about in church, and I'm gonna, I'm going to put my little two cents and I put it in a hardback because I knew if people use this as a discussion starter, somebody was going to get offended because you know how easily Christians get offended. So somebody was going to get offended, but it's perfect because it's a hardback. <laughs> so if somebody acts stupid, it's a dual purpose. You just smack them in Jesus' name because <laughs> if you're going to smack somebody in church, you got to do it in Jesus' name. You got to try to make it spiritual. I get it, folks. All right, so we get a couple of those. What else we got? A few, uh, few of the, uh, whose child is this? My testimony, uh, the story of how my mom left me on the street corner, walked away. Most of you remember me. I shared most of that with you last year, if you were here. Um, so that's all in that book. Uh, I apologize. There's not a lot of stuff left after the first service, but I got a couple left of the book, The Teflon Rhino. If you're gonna make it in life, if you're gonna make it in ministry, you gotta have skin thick as a rhino made out of Teflon. Nothing sticks to you. Let me say that again for the cheap seats in the back. <laughs> if you're gonna make it, folks, you're gonna have to be a Teflon Rhino because the enemy you know what I'm saying. The enemy will throw everything he can at you because it's all designed to get you to quit. That's all this is, guys. That's the purpose of the fight. Because if you quit, he wins, you're done, you become another statistic, and it's over. You understand. So that's, that's it's kind, of the, it's kind of the direction I'm going. I did two different messages today because this one is uh, what I want to talk to you today. Uh, usually I was shocked when he invited me to come back. Usually I go somewhere once and that's it. I never get invited back <laughs> because it, I usually kill everybody the first time and then Merry Christmas. But pastor, you'll be proud. They got me donuts. I have donuts. It worked. See, there was the truth there. You, you, get, you get what you ask for. So I got donuts. Somebody tried to take one. I just mm, mess with my donuts. Anyways, hey, uh, I told you first service, I want to tell you guys, uh, last year after the service, for those of you that sponsored kids, we had such an amazing response last year. And many of you took one of our kids and sponsored one. You've been able to be connected with your sponsor child. We've got a few more left on the back table. A couple of kids from Metro Kenya. I think there's a couple from Metro Haiti, a couple from Metro Philippines. It's a $33 a month commitment. You can be as involved in their life as you choose to be. And I was trying, you know, the biggest challenge, I think one of the biggest challenges for me is trying to communicate See, I asked them to put stairs 
here. You know, this isn't normal. This was by special request. Because I got a feeling in this next service, I'm going to come out and grab somebody. Because it's just kind of one of those afternoons. And I figure I won't be back for another year. So I'm just going to unload the whole truck in this service. So I got my stairs. So I'm coming for you. I'm coming after you. If I don't think people, just like she, could you bring it on? Bring it on. All right. All right. But I think one of the biggest challenges of me is trying to communicate stuff in this sponsorship that I, I don't ever feel like I put it over as well as I could because I've been so close to it. Just coming back is where I got this. I got banged up in Haiti. Uh, with uh, There was a lady that asked me to go and get proof of life on those missionaries. You've been seeing it in the news, those 17 American missionaries. I think it was 16 Americans, one Canadian. Got kidnapped in Haiti. They're still being held. And this gal that has allowed me to go and do some pretty unusual things to rescue a lot of people. She said, Bill, can you go and just see if they're alive? Just get proof of life, see if they're alive. And so long story, I went in there with a CIA guy that she had arranged. Um, they had me, I had a picture on his phone and I was gonna take a picture of it on my phone, but it was only five out of the 17. So I was kind of pushing it pushing it, said, look, where's the rest of them? What's the deal? And then one thing led to another. Um, one guy went into a, a little hut kind of thing, and that grabbed a Haitian woman, and in front of me, took a machete, cut her breasts off, threw her on the ground in front of me. So I'm looking, it's all intimidation, folks. That's how these guys operate. They operate on intimidation. I've, I've been around it for years. I've watched it. And so we just, I kept pushing it. And then that guy uh, hit me in the head, the butt of a 12 gauge, hit me here, knocked me down. Um, and we had a little more of a discussion. And then uh, the CIA guy grabbed me by the arm. He said, we just need to go now, we need to go. And I'm telling you guys this, so that when I walk you through the message in these next couple of moments, to me, when I talk to folks, it's more than just a message. It's my life. This is my life. And I try to share it in a way that I'm not just telling stories, but to try to make something click with you guys, to encourage you, to lift your faith, to help you see things differently in, uh, in your own life. And I... I was communicating the sponsorship and the difference that it makes in the life of a kid. And I, I almost showed a little video instead of showing the pictures. It was a little girl, Cherry Ann, that uh, had an operation. Her sponsor was there in the Philippines, saw it, and really was the driver to get an operation that realistically, without being dramatic, had saved her life and gave her a chance for normal life. I was gonna show a video I didn't. I, I told the folks the story of Cherry Ann. But now, in this one, I'm going to show this. I've never shown this in a public meeting. I think most of you guys know me. You know what I do. Uh, you know why I do what I do. But there was one little boy in Africa that our team was doing their best to get sponsored. And really the only what's the word, pastor? The only tool, I guess, that we have to get kids sponsored is me, being out on the road like this. I drive the bus in New York on Saturday. Uh, we're getting back into the Sunday school deal uh, after this pandemic. And then I jump on a plane every Saturday night like we did last night and show up here at a church, try to convey the need. Uh, so it's me being out. Um, and the folks that were trying to get this little boy sponsored, they couldn't get him, couldn't get him. I couldn't get the picture 
And so uh, something happened to him there. I don't know if it's a genetic. There are certain cultures, there are certain parts of the world that uh, I showed a picture of a little boy in Haiti that had a tumor that uh, we were able to get him an operation. And uh, by the grace of God, he's grown up to be a, a, a wonderful young teenage boy now. But yeah, it was, for those of you that were in the first service, you saw it, you know what I'm talking about. And so in, in parts of, of Africa, predominantly Kenya, there's a, the folks have tremendous trouble with vision. Um, and so what is happening? You've got some of these scam artist doctors that are paying guys $100 to go out and steal eyeballs. Yeah, I know. I'd heard about it, but I hadn't really seen it. Um, but they would pay people to steal an eyeball out of somebody's head for a hundred bucks. And then they would advertise to folks that we will give you an eye transplant if there's like a, an older person that's going blind or has vision impairment that said, we will give you a new eye to restore your vision. And they charge them $1,000. Well, now you guys know, you don't just pull somebody's eye out of one head and put it in somebody else's. But again, in Africa, and a lot of the folks aren't up to speed with what can be done. And so they get guys to s steal eyes, pay them 100 bucks, and then they charge people 1000 for an eye off. And they've been trying to get this little boy sponsored. And they couldn't do it, couldn't do it. And uh, it was just a couple of months ago. Um, I got, Ashley, do we have that other video? I want to show this to you. And this will make <laughs> so. That's enough. That's enough. What you just saw, I'm sure you know, is that was the little boy that we were trying to get sponsored. They were in the market, and one of those guys came up, stuck his two fingers in his eye, ripped his eye out, and then the other people that saw it, that's what we all know as street justice. And they decided they were going to take care of the guy that uh, took the little boy's eye. This is why I don't show this especially on a Sunday. I get it, folks. Most folks aren't up for this kind of stuff. This is my world. I make choices to come into your world. But for a couple minutes this morning, I'm going to bring you into my world, if you're okay with that. If you're okay. Is that okay, Pastor? It's okay. And uh, so now this little boy got his eye ripped out we never got to sponsor them. What does this mean to you? It means when you see those pictures on the back table, we're trying to take one kid, like the man who picked me up off the street where my mother left me. We're trying to get people, as many as we can, to take one child. I'm not asking you to sponsor a country. I'm not asking you to sponsor a city. I'm asking you to sponsor one kid. To do something and kids like this, that's, where, that's their world, folks. You walked into their world right there. So, Pastor, again, thank you. Thanks for letting me share this. I know this is tough stuff, but thanks, guys. I appreciate you backing me up. I appreciate you praying for me. And uh, I'll be around back there as long as I need to be to talk to you, to answer questions. And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Get your Bibles out quickly, if you will, please. For those of you watching online, uh, we're thrilled that you're watching, but uh, please come back to church, first chance you get. I'm just gonna let that waft for a minute. Hey, I know it's, it's easier to sit in your underwear on Sunday and watch church, I get it. Better you sit home in your underwear than I guess sitting here in your underwear. But, so I, I get it but there is no substitute for being in the house of God. There is no substitute for being in the house, not forsaking the assembling of yourselves. So 
We're anxiously awaiting you to return, to return. So, where was I? Ah, I was in Atlanta, Georgia. I'd been invited by the Southern Baptist Convention to speak to the hierarchy of their education department. They were trying to figure out how a non-Baptist organization became the largest Sunday school in the world. I love it when I beat the Baptist. In Jesus' name, of course. Just. So, I, mean, I, I spent hours with these guys. I had my little PowerPoint, and walking through it, how we started the Sunday school, and how it worked. And it went, well, almost five hours. And then the leader said, Pastor Bill, could you wait here in the room while we go and discuss for a few moments what you've said? Well, what am I supposed to say? No. I said, okay. But these, see, these guys didn't know me. I've got this A, D, 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 D thing. I am not the kind of person you leave unattended for any length of time. You just don't. People that know me know that. Like, I'll be talking to you. <laughs> I'll be talking. And it's like, we're like in a board meeting with the board of demons. And we're just talking. And we're just, and I'm, and I'm looking out the window. I mean, I look like Joe Biden, you know, at the summit. Just sleeping in the summit. I don't sleep. I just, I'm just somewhere else. I'm off somewhere. So, so these guys go up. I'm just saying. Okay. I don't want to get political, but if you want me to, I can do it. I can do it in a heartbeat. All right, so I'm sitting in this room, right? And there's nothing there, so I'm just sitting here. So I can sit for about five minutes, and that's kind of it. But over on the side, there was a bunch of like, uh, what do you call it, like filing cabinets. So I thought, let me go look through their drawers, so to speak. Uh, so I'm, I'm going over here. I'm just looking through stuff. And I see there's one folder that says confidential. <laughs> yeah. Things that make you go, exactly. <laughs> so I thought, hey, it's Baptist. How confidential can this be? <laughs> and why would they leave it where somebody like me can look at it? <laughs> so I justified it. I took the folder out, set it on the table. <laughs> I'm my greatest source of entertainment. I make myself laugh. I, got, and I, look, I thought, this really is confidential. <laughs> let me tell you what it was. Okay, let me explain it to you. <laughs> exactly. It was the result of a five-year study that the Southern Baptists had done on why people were quitting. Why are people quitting Baptist Church? And... There's a bunch of them quitting the leaders. Oh, by, by the way, the latest stats from last month, 1,312 preachers quit the ministry last month. 1,312. Yeah. And if we lined those suckers up and asked them, did God call you into the ministry? You know, you know that most of them would have said, yeah, Okay, so you said God called you. You know what I'm gonna say. And yet, you got offended. You got, uh, what? You got disillusioned. You know why I've never been disillusioned? I never got illusioned. That was worth you dragging your sorry self out here today if you don't get nothing else but that. Don't get illusioned. You won't get disillusioned. You won't. That's how, that's how I can still do this. So, so maybe they got disillusioned, discouraged, disenchanted with the ministry. You don't understand, Pastor Bill. Yes, I do. Yeah, I've done this 50 years. Tell me something I don't know. I'll listen. You can't. I, I get this. Well, somebody stole money from me. <laughs> yeah, take a number. <laughs> take a number. And, well, they lied about me. Oh, they lied. About, and you're the only one in ministry that anybody's ever lied about. You moron, shut up. 
I will slap you myself. It won't even be in Jesus' name. I'll just slap you because you need to be slapped. So you got 13, and by the way, the average, average in America is 1,100 a month. That's the average, guys. 1,100 preachers fold it up, walk away, and go. Why? A myriad of reasons. Myriad. You, we asked them, did God call you? Okay. okay, so you're telling me that the God who created the heavens and the earth, okay? everything else is made in China, but the God who created the heavens and the earth, well, it just is. And somebody offended you, and now you quit? Shame on you. Shame on you. You should have never been in the ministry in the first place. If that's all you got, you ain't going to make it. You ain't going to make it anyway. Hmm. A five-year study of why people down here, they leaving. People up here, they following them. They're all going to the parking lot. So this is interesting now. This got my attention. So I know these guys are coming back in the room. So I got to read this thing quick. Let me tell you something. If there'd have been a copy machine in that room, I'd have copied that sucker. I'd have put it under the blood later, but I would have copied that thing because there's some pretty good information. So man, I'm, let me get to the back of the book. So I'm flipping this thing. Here it is. See if this resonates with you. Because I'm thinking... There was a difference in rationale between the reason why folks up here quit in opposition to the folks out here quit, okay? I know, I know why folks up here quit. <laughs> I, I get that, okay? But it's like, okay, so here's the result of the study. Same, same things, same reasons, same, same stuff. Watch this. See if this makes sense. So you got people get in a, in a battle. They get in a fight. They get in a struggle. Some kind of altercation. Okay, whatever, whatever. But they shake it off, get through it, got through it. Just exactly like she was singing in the song. Get through it. We're going past her set. We're going to make it through it. What's that old country music song? You know, really, you, we could have just played a country music song here, and then we could all went to lunch. Because most, most reality, it's all, for those of you that don't like country music, you're not saved. You're just not saved. You just need to listen to just good old country music. It'll end, outside of the Bible, that's your best resource because they'll tell you everything. All right, let me get back to the message. All right, so, all right, so they get in a fight, some struggle. What is it, money? Uh, relationships, health, pick one, pick any of them, pick one. Wasn't the issue. But they go through something, boom, they get through it, going good, moving along. Well, then a little later, they go through something else. Okay, so they're in another fight, in another drama of some sort. They get through that one. And now, here's the hook of the five-year study. Then most folks, whether you're sitting here or you're hanging out up here, same deal. They get to one final struggle. Listen to me. Watch me. One battle. One situation. And what's that, what's that phrase we use, Pastor? The straw that breaks the camel's back? Yeah. Do y'all use that in Texas? Do, do you? Okay. All right. So I heard one guy that was in Texas. He, I said, how are you doing, Pastor? He said, I'm fatter than a tick. I said, fatter than a tick. I'd never heard that. That's a Texas thing, apparently. I didn't know that. So they get to that one last struggle, and that's it. They're done. That one final, did they just run out of steam? Did they run out of faith? Did they just get tired of dealing with people complaining that they didn't have their same parking place? on Sunday? Maybe. 
or people that sit in the same chair every Sunday and God help the person that's sitting in their chair? Mm -hmm. No, where was I? I was in Knoxville. Okay. I'm setting up a book table, getting the kids ready to sponsor, and one of the ushers comes up. He goes, Pastor needs to see you right away. So okay. So we run to the office, and the pastor is in his office. Some guy, I don't know, but I mean, they're like this. They're like face to face, and they're getting ready to square off. Well, I know how this works. I figured that's why he called me. So I just take off my coat. What's up? Hi. But I figured that's why he called me. I'm good, because I'm always on the pastor's side. Well, let me see. I said, I'm always on the pastor's side. Uh-huh. Somebody asked me if I needed a bodyguard to walk in here today. What's up? I hope somebody starts a fight. So, I mean, they're getting ready, man. They're getting ready to square off. And so far, I said, yo. I said, look, everybody, take a breath here. So then I got to, you know why the guy was going to punch the pastor? The guy was one of the greeters. The greeter. The friendly people with the dopey little signs out there. The greeter. Who's got the dopey little signs? Oh, is it these guys? All right. I love, is it you? You got your sign? All right. Yeah, show it to me later. We'll take a picture. I'll put you on TV next week. It was one of the greeters, supposed to be the friendly people, right? He's getting ready to swing on the pastor. You know why he was mad? Because one of the other greeters was sick. So the head greeter was going to move this guy from his usual door. Because, you know, he bought the door. You know, he owns the stinking door. Here's my door. What's up? Here's my door. I, my door. They moved him. <laughs> you can't make this up, man. This is church people. You want to know why I'm like I am? This is why. This is 50 years of dealing with these pinheads. They move him from one door to another door. He ain't having it. That's my door. That's my door. <laughs> See, you don't, you just come in here. You like them, they're the best. And you come in here and you just got your nice little chair and you walk. You have no idea what happens behind the scenes. As a, you have no clue. Because you, you think everybody's like you. Well, that may be a good thing that not everybody is like you. But that's another part. So, so these guys, over a thousand a month, quit and walk away. How does that work, guys? During this pandemic, it's been interesting, hasn't it, to see how many people just, and I touched on it in the first service from Isaiah, in the year the king died. In the year the king died. When it looked like things were falling apart, people panic. Hey, folks, I live in New York, I live in Brooklyn. That was the epicenter of when this whole mess started. I knew I was going to get it. I, we were working in a COVID hospital. Bringing, I was invited when they wouldn't even let people who are loved ones are dying there. They invited us to go in, pray for the doctors, pray for the nurses. I, they put all that stuff. I looked like an astronaut. They had all this stuff. But I thought, I'm still going to get it. And I did. But I've, but I've had both. Don't get nervous. I'm, I've had both my shots. I've got, I've got antibodies. I've got, I've got all kinds of stuff going on. I've had more shots. Okay, so. Exactly. So, so I'm thinking, what would make somebody not get it enough? Is, is, it, is the pandemic it? Was that the epitome of an excuse? of saying, okay, now again, I'm not gonna get political with this. I, I actually have a mask, I should have brought it. I have to wear it on the plane. I still have to wear it on the plane. Oh, wait a minute, I think I've got it. Yeah, flip that up here, yeah. I forgot I got my bag right here. Some of you get a kick out of this. 
Some of you will be offended. But like I said, I won't be back for a year. <laughs> Here it is. This is the one I wear when I want to get in a fight. It says, this mask is as useless as Joe Biden. Come on, Jesus. Come on. Come on. Now, I, I ought to be selling these. I should make these and sell them. I'd probably make more money than selling those T-shirts back there. So when I'm feeling like I need to get in a fight at LaGuardia, I just wear that mask because it does it every time. All right, so open your Bibles. Open your Bibles quickly because we got to go. Uh, where are we at? Flip over to, uh, to the book of Judges. Look at this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw this at you for a couple minutes and then, uh, and then we'll get out. Okay. What's happening here? They are choosing people to fight in a critical, pivotal battle. Let me see. Here's important words here. They are getting ready to fight in a critical, pivotal battle. So obviously the people that they're choosing to fight are being chosen for a reason, because of the nature of the fight. Now, pick it up in the 20th chapter and the 14th verse. I'm going to read it quickly, throw some things at you, and then I'll be finished. Judges chapter 20, verse 14. But the children of Benjamin gathered themselves together out of the cities unto Gibeah to go out to battle against the children of Israel. 15. And the children of Benjamin were numbered at that time 26,000 men that drew sword, comma, beside the inhabitants of Gibeah, comma, which were numbered 700 chosen men. Hmm. Now, in the Hebrew, I'm not going to bore you with speaking much Hebrew, but you need to get this. So pay attention to this because you need to get it. This word chosen here in the Hebrew, it has a different connotation than maybe what we use as an, in the English vernacular. If I needed one man, one person to help me, I've got three qualified people on the front row. I could pick any one of those three. I could choose any one of those three to help. Not what chosen means here. This word chosen in that B part of the 15th verse, it means this. It means they were hand-picked, chosen for a specific reason. Got it? Hand-chosen for a reason. Watch this. You're going to get this in a minute. Verse 16. All these people, there were 700 chosen men. They were all left-handed. Now, I'm not talking about the Benjamites here. This is what, it took me a year to flush this out. And I'll explain to you why. Because only 9% of the world's population is left-handed at any time. I don't know why. It's just, it's a percentage thing. So 9% of the world is left-handed. But here, they found 700 men Hmm. And they chose them. Now, why? They're getting ready to fight a critical, pivotal battle. So they got 26,000. And then they, they get these 700 guys. Look at verse 16. And these 700 chosen men, left-handed, every one of them could sling stones at a hair and not miss. Now, most people just read this. I don't know why people read their Bible in the toilet. I will never understand that. That's never made sense to me. Most people are only capable of doing one thing well at a time, and yet we insist. I'm going to read my Bible in the bathroom. No. Read it, study it, focus. Okay? Most people miss this. I missed it for years. Let me tell you how... Let me tell you how I discovered this. So I was teaching a class. I teach Old Testament in Europe. Uh, and so I was teaching the class of Judges. And I, I read this, and I read it again, and I thought, there's something here. There was something here, and I'm going to find it. I made up my mind something about these 700 men. There's a truth here. I've got a pretty extensive library at home. I don't buy American books by American authors, because it's all kind of the same stuff. 
It's just kind of a regurgitation. I buy all my books overseas, predominantly in, uh, in the UK, 1700s, 1800s. Those preachers, how can I say that? They had, they had an interesting understanding of history. And their preaching was a reflection of their understanding of world history. That's why today, when you read books by today's folks, it's just, it's just different. So I buy all my books. There's a couple of uh, villages over there, particularly in Wales. You can go and I'll, they'll drop me off at nine in the morning. I get all the books, box them up. They pick me back up at five and we ship all the books back to New York. So I'm working on this, this, this 700 thing. So I'm thinking, okay, there's got to be something. And I've got some pretty good commentaries. I've got some of the best American commentaries, most widely read. Not one thing, folks. I could not find this in any American commentaries or books. Not that it made any sense. One commentary, <laughs> you know, like this. One commentary says they were left-handed because they were not right-handed. <laughs> no, no, that's what they said. You can't make this up, folks. I thought, I need to write my own commentary. I could have come up with something better than that. So I'm digging, digging, digging. So I'm over in this, there's a little village called Hay on Wye. It's on the Wye River in Wales. So I, I'm in this little bookstore and I asked the guy, he's a little guy, little tiny guy. I thought he was bending over the counter, but he wasn't. <laughs> no, he was just, And I, you know, you don't want to laugh, but you can't help it. And so I said, do you have a, do you have a theology department? He goes, it's in the basement. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and he gives me a flashlight. They're British. They, they, they can't pay their electric bills. So they give you a, a flashlight. So I'm, I'm going down in the basement, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm looking, looking, looking. And, and I found this one volume one volume on Judges by an old preacher by the name of White. So I thought, okay. So I sit down, I got the flashlight in my mouth and I'm flipping and, and I thought, there it is. See, I knew if I looked long enough, I because there's a truth there and I knew it was there, I just couldn't find it. But in that one verse, not one verse, one sentence, there it is, here's, here's the hook. He said they were left-handed because they were no longer right-handed. You're slow, but you're worth waiting for. Right. It took just, took just a minute to kind of wash there. What you've got, sports fans, is 700 men that were right-handed, but in a fight somewhere, in a battle somewhere, maybe they lost a finger. Maybe they lost a hand. Maybe they lost an arm. Okay. See, in our army today, if you get wounded in battle, you're out. You don't get a vote, you're done. Get you on the plane, you're gone. But in Bible times, if you got wounded, the leadership gave you the option. You can go home or you can stay in the fight. Huh. So what we have here is 700 men that got wounded, my God. Amen. They got wounded in a battle. Could have went home, could have left, could have walked away from the fight, could have called 1-800-CRY-BABY like some of you. Mm -hmm. And just left. But instead, instead, they said, okay, I can't use this, but, I still got this. I got something still to fight with. I've still got this. And that, that, why do you think it says in the B part of that 16th verse, this is why it says this. Now it makes perfect sense. It says every one of them could sling a stone at a hair and not miss. So I started researching how guys would learn you know how to do that, that slingshot. Some of them were quite proficient. What they did, I never knew this until I started researching this. They would take horsehair 
either out of the mane or out of the tail. They would tie one end to a tree branch, then they would tie a stone to the other end. For what reason? To hold it steady so the wind wouldn't blow it. So it would hold the hair steady. The guys that were serious, the guys that were serious, the people that were serious about the fight, because this is a critical, pivotal battle, and the future of the nation is hinging on this battle, just like in the future of this nation that we call home is hinging on some men and women that have been beat up, that have been discouraged, that have been despondent, that have been depressed, and they've been maybe wounded but they got some left to fight with. They've still got some fight left in them. And they said, they said, I'm gonna be better left-handed than I ever was right-handed. You better get this, folks. You better get it. You better get it. The very thing that the enemy tried to use by wounding them and take them out of the battle was the very thing that motivated them to be better and come right back. Oh, you better get it in Jesus' name. Wounded, God's army still uses wounded soldiers. Wounded soldiers. For those that feel like they're out of the fight, that it's been too late, something happened, mistakes, the past, drama, lies, hatred, anger, bitterness. Oh no, 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 please. What in the world do you think could make me quit? Ha, I dare you. Now I've been through it, folks. At 73 years old, you know what? And I told him on the podcast, I did before the first service. I said, my whole life has been preparation for right now. It's all been prepped. It's all been prepped for right now. Try to take me out. Hit me in the head. Shoot me in the back. Throw me off a building. Lie, cheat, steal. Do whatever you want. I know whom I have believed. And I'm still persuaded that he's still able to keep that which I've committed unto him again. You better praise him. You better praise him. I know. I've lived it. I'm not 20. I'm 73. I've lived it, folks. I've been to hell and back several times. I have a room at the Hilton Hell. I passed through there. The difference is I don't live there. The difference is I don't stay there. The difference is I don't feel sorry for myself. The battle's not over yet. We're in a fight for this nation. We're in a fight. And the church people just, nah, hey, hey, and you want to just, I'm going to slap you. <laughs> the church has got to speak with a louder voice. It's time for us, folks. It's time for the church to speak above the foolishness. That's being taught in public school. The foolishness that we see. We speak the truth with a louder voice. Because we know that the truth will set you free. (laughs) But first, it'll make you miserable. That's the one beauty about the truth. It'll jack your jaw. It'll, it'll, It'll make you look at yourself. The enemy thought if even if we could wound them, they were just sissies. They wouldn't make it. But those 700 men, yeah, they understood the fight. They understood their position in the fight. They understood what will happen if they lose the fight. And they said, greater is he that is within us than he that is within the world. I'm not quitting now. And it says, they could hit a hair with a stone and not miss. I'm out of time. Let me give you three thoughts. Scribble them on a piece of paper. I'm going to throw it at you right now. And then we're going, are we recording this? Is this recorded? Yes. Uh, three said yes. The rest of you don't know. Okay. Oh, the sign girls. Yes. Okay. All right. Don't forget the signs. All right. Here it is. 
See if this makes sense. Number one, here's the three observations I pulled from this and see if it resonates with you guys. Number one, if you're still right-handed here, you ought to be jumping up and down. I mean, your socks ought to be going up and down. See, if you haven't been wounded, but see, if you live long enough, <laughs> hey, for some of you millennials, you young people, toughest thing that's ever happened to you, you lost your phone charger. <laughs> and you had an attack. My God. That's the toughest thing some of you ever been through. But for those of us that have been around a bit, yeah, when you've seen as many people killed as I have, when you've watched what I just watched two weeks ago there in Haiti, and where the CIA guy, when he took my arm, was walking me away, and the woman that was bleeding out, she was crying. She said, please don't leave me. Please don't leave me. See, that's why some days I can go through a Sunday and preach and communicate, and then other days, not so well. Not so well. Not so well. I had a Christian psychiatrist, <laughs> whatever that means. And he said, he said, technically, he said, you shouldn't be able to put two sentences together anymore, let alone speak in public. I'm up here, my friends, by the grace of God. That's the only reason I'm here. There's no other reason I should be able to get up and speak. I'm very aware of the presence of the Holy Ghost. Even right this moment, I'm very aware. I'm very aware. So if you haven't been wounded yet, just understand your time's coming. You say, well, that doesn't, that doesn't sound like faith. Faith got nothing to do with it. It's got to do with living life long enough that you're going to go through some things. You're going to go through some battles. You're going to go through some fights. You're just hard. Some of you younger people, you will live probably to see your parents die. Now, how are you going to handle that? So just, just know it's coming. It's coming. You will see things in life that I, so much of the stuff I've seen, I, you don't get prepared for what I just went through two weeks ago. You don't get prepared for that. But guess what? I've been prepared. I've been prepared because I never quit. I never walked away. When the bullets were flying, I never walked away. When the funerals were stacking up, I didn't walk away. When the people that said, Pastor Bill, we'll be with you all our lives. When I was young, I used to believe that. <laughs> I'm not young anymore. I'm not young anymore. And that's okay. So if you haven't been wounded, yeah, haven't been wounded, your time's coming. I was, I was trying to get, where was I? I was in Berlin. And I run out of toothpaste. It's the middle of the night. And I, I'm, I'm half German, half Scottish. I, I can speak a little German, but not enough. So there's this little 24-hour market outside the hotel. So I go in there, toothpaste, toothpaste. I don't know how you say that. Tooth, you know how Mary, I, I speak three languages, okay? English, slower English, and slower and louder English. You ever notice that's what we do as Americans? If people don't get us, we just slow and loud. Like that's going to help people. Do you understand? I love Americans. So I'm going, toothpaste, toothpaste, toothpaste. No, no, okay, great, all right. So the guy with me, he, one of my guys, he goes, he goes, hey, I think this is toothpaste. You think? You think? Okay, what if it's preparation H? I mean, what? No, no, I'm like, what, are you guys nuts? So I think, wait a minute. So I was so mad at that point, I just, I looked around, I got one of the things, and you know what I did? I just popped the box open, opened it up, and I squeezed the tube of toothpaste, got a little, yep, that's it. Now, see, that, see, it's just like you. You think you've got it, but you're never gonna know until life squeezes you. And then we'll see, my friend, what comes out of you. Then, at that point, when you get squeezed and the pressure is on and everybody says, you're not going to make it, and everybody says, you don't have a chance, let them squeeze you. And then we'll see what's in you. Show me what's in you. Don't tell me. Show me. Show me. How long? How long? 
will it take? Number two, when you get wounded, not if, when. When you get wounded, you got two choices. What are they? This is pretty simple. No matter what anybody tells you, here's a fact. When you get wounded, you got two choices, stay or go. That's it, stay or go, stay or go, stay or go. You have to choose. You have to make the call. There's been many times in these 50 years. See, I was there when my home pastor, see, the man that picked me up off the street, he sent me to the youth camp. That's where I got saved. I got home, except I had no home. My mother was gone. She never came back. So they let they cleaned out a maintenance closet in the church that the man who picked me up attended. So I lived in that closet for almost three years. Had a little piece of foam rubber. That was my mattress. And the home, the pastor at that time, he saw something in me. Listen to me. He saw something. He believed in me. Nobody believed in me. He did. He did. And the day he committed suicide, you want to share stories? Let's go. Meet me at the table. We share stories. We share stories. Yeah. They found him with his hand reaching for the phone. What does that mean? I have no idea. So don't think I'm some 20-year-old kid that just graduated from some bogus Bible school. I saw what you got up here today. I saved that for others. This is real life today, my friends. This is real life. So when you get wounded, stay or go. <laughs> I guess that means my time's up. <laughs> I am so perceptive. I, it's the thrill of being comprehended. <laughs> I get it. When you get wounded, stay or go, guys. But let me see. You have a choice to take all the stuff that the enemy has thrown at you. Everything. And you can let it destroy you. You can make it make you walk away. But I will say this. Don't waste your wasted years. Some of you have wasted part of your lives. Some of you, before you got saved, wasted a big chunk. Okay, so you can feel sorry for yourself. Think you're not qualified. Don't waste your wasted years. Take it. Use it to make you stronger and tougher and winning a battle that somebody has to step up and do. Don't waste it. Don't waste it. And number three, last. If you decide to stay, if you decide to stay, why don't you just make up your mind? You're going to take it all. Take the whole mess, everything, everything that's all designed to get you to quit. When, uh, when I got shot there in Syria, we were there to do medical work. We were there to do Sunday school. And it was the day before I got shot, we were bringing people in to, uh, they, they brought them in and fled prison. Turn that thing down a little bit. Turn it down. <laughs> Make me come back here. <laughs> so, I'm watching this lady carrying this little boy. She's coming up the ramp, right? And she's carrying him. And I'm, I'm yelling at security because they didn't open the gate yet. They bring him in at nine. They get him back again at five. I said, open it up, open it up. And I grab my interpreter and we're running down the ramp. And she's, she's stumbling. I, I thought, I don't know if she's gonna make it. And then I was about from here to about this fourth, fifth row, and she falls. She falls, she drops the boy. So we run over, the interpreter picks her up, and I pick up the little boy, and I'm holding him. And his arm is bandaged here, all up. And, and the, she's looking at me crying. She keeps saying the same thing. And I said, the interpreter said, what is she saying? And what she was saying is, is please help my boy. What had happened? Because you guys, if you know politics in that part of the world, the president, al-Assad, had been doing barrel bomb runs about 20 clicks away from our camp on a ridge. You could see it at night. You could see the, the things blowing up. And in one of those barrel bomb runs, a piece of shrapnel 
had cut the little boy's hand off. Like the, it looked like it had been hit with an ax. I mean, it was just a hard, straight through cut. But it had happened over two weeks ago. Exactly. And she had tourniqueted the thing, had enough sense to tourniquet it, wrapped it up, but the gangrene has already set in, things infected. So I'm standing, and I can't put this over to you. I'm gonna try. And you're standing in the middle of this desert, right? And you got this little kid, and he's looking at me, and she just keeps saying, please help my boy. And I told the interpreter, I said, just, just tell her, I can't help him. I can't help him. I can't help him. And you know what? I'm tired of telling people I can't help them. That's why I'm getting an MD. I got the PhD, but I'm getting an MD now. Why? At my age, why do I want to become a medical doctor? Because I'm tired of telling people I can't help you. Amen. I'm going to help as many as I can before I die. I'm gonna give this the best I got, folks. And I want you all to know that. I am your missionary. I think I represent Inspire Church pretty well. I think, I think I do. I try, I'm trying, man, I'm trying. I said, I, I can't help him. And then, and, she, and then, she, she reaches into a paper bag and she pulls out his hand. She went through the rubble after the explosion and found his hand. And now she's, she's holding his hand and going like this to me. She said, please help him. Please help him. And I, can, I can't. I can't help him. I can't. Okay. And I watched her take her boy out of my arms and she walked back down the ramp, and she's gone. So you're standing in the middle of the desert, and you wonder, what the heck? What the heck am I doing? But that night, that night, when I got shot, and I didn't know if that thing had gone through the vest, they put me, the Israelis put me in a chopper, flew me to the hospital in Jerusalem. And the nurse, a little Jewish girl, of course, but I knew she'd been around Christians because I could tell. You know, when you're around a Christian, like a real Christian, you kind of know, don't you? Yeah, you do. And she said, Pastor, she said, how? How have you done this all these years? I said, it's only by the blood of Jesus and the grace of God. I've been wounded, beat up, seen way too much. I get it. But yet here I am with you guys. And I can't tell you how thankful I am. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you for letting me be here. And if it wasn't for the blood, none of us would have a chance. Of Jesus washes me. Come on. Oh, the blood of Jesus shed for me. And what a sacrifice that saved my life. Yes, the blood. It is my victory. Well, what do you say after that? I think we've all felt the same emotion today. No matter how committed we are to the kingdom of God and to serving Christ, I think that somehow this has called out of us a deeper level of commitment. 
And that has to be responded to in several ways. I'm going to lead us in a prayer in just a moment, but I'm asking our ushers to please go through the audience right now. And we have five ways to give. And um, I, I'm going to ask you to please, I, I don't always do this. I am for this ministry because I know that they help so many people. I'm going to ask you to give the very best that you possibly can. And they touch, like I said, almost 300,000 children every single week in the most impoverished circumstances you could possibly imagine in places that you would never want to go. And we have a tendency to to scale things according to our perspective and our perspective is based on our experience so if you've never seen ultimate deprivation and need then what you end up doing is when people talk about need and and they talk about desperate circumstances you say yeah i know what that's like and you refer back to your own experience but you leave this country and you go places in this world there is desperate need beyond your ability to fathom it. And that's often where Bill is ministering, and I admire that so much. I've never met anybody communicate passion more than he is able to communicate because passion is not something that you just work up and you, you know, you you do a little stage performance and and it gets across because when you speak to people, you speak from here to here, but you also speak from here to here. And so you might have it all down from here, but something be missing. When Bill speaks, you get the idea. It's not just this speaking, but it's a heart that's speaking. A heart that's seen a lot and that wants to do a lot more. I want you to give generously. And if you're visiting with us today, I want you to know that our policy at Inspire always has been to give everything you give that's designated to a missionary or to a guest speaker to that need. And I can't think of anybody more deserving that we've ever had in the 34 years that I've been privileged to serve you than Bill. So the ushers are gonna go through right now. Father, I thank you for the opportunity to give today. We thank you for the opportunity to sow into this ministry. God, I pray you'll give Bill life and strength and health for many years to come and use him because we need him and we need men like this to be an example to the rest of us. In Jesus' name, amen. There are five ways to give on the screen and I wanna thank you for uh, your giving in advance. Also, uh, Bill wants to be at the book table and last time he was here, a number of people signed up to support children. I would love for you to do that if you've not done that. For $33, you can make a huge difference in a child's life. You see, you can give that child the gift of life. And in some cases, I call it the gift of destiny. I've helped kids here along the way in our travels over overseas in different places. We've given them the gift of destiny. What is that? Well, I've sent kids to, to school, uh, vocational school and things like, not on this level, but before your life is over, I'd like to challenge you, give the gift of destiny to someone. I know the service is kept a little bit longer, but the ushers are going through and, um, and, and, and they're gonna serve you. And then we'll ever hit his bowed right now. Is there anybody here who's not given their heart to the Lord? Could I see your hand? And you wanna give your life to, to the Lord. Anybody here, just raise your hand. Anybody at home? I want to pray together for those at home. Father, save those that you're dealing with whose hearts you're touching right now. Write their names in the book of life. And Lord, let them accept you and receive you as their Lord and Savior, as an act of their own decision today so that they will live this out. And if you prayed that prayer and you're watching at home and you prayed it or here, do three other things. Get baptized be in, filled full of the infilling of the Holy Spirit and become a Bible-believing disciple. And you can go to that QR code or you can text to that number and you can send us a prayer request. Let us know you gave your heart to God. Make an appointment for baptism. Or you can text the word JOIN to that number or go to the QR code and simply write in the word JOIN. And 
uh, you can become a part of the daily devotional. I write a daily devotional every day. We have over 2,000 families that subscribe to it. And you can join with 2,000 other families over that in going to uh, your devotions in the morning at the same time or roughly the same time and all study the same scriptures, pray the same prayer, sing the same worship song. And now this is what I want to do with every head bowed. How many of you felt the Lord really stir your heart here today? I mean, God's really stirred your heart. Can I see your hand? Many of you have. God's stirring you to a deeper level of commitment and purpose. Don't let this season pass. You know why I'm pastoring this church right now? It's because when God dealt with me when I was younger in those moments and I felt conviction that I responded. And I, I didn't just let the season pass and say, oh, I got stirred up for a little while and then life will go back to normal. No, in those moments, I made commitments to God. And I said, God, if you can use me, use me. If there's anything you can do with me, do it. And I made myself available. And if you will do that, I promise you it will transform your life. Father, I pray right now for every person who is here that you would draw us closer to you, stir our hearts more, bring us nearer to the cross, and use us to reflect the profound goodness of God because you're a good God beyond description, a God who is good beyond words. And we love you more than words could ever say because you love us more than words could ever say. And we bless you today. In Jesus' name, amen. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord lift up his face upon you, be gracious to you. Lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace in Jesus' name. Don't forget Wednesday night, next Sunday. Love you guys so much. Be blessed. Please stop at the book table. Bill has a, a few items left. Sign up to support a child. You'll make a difference in somebody's life. We just had an incredible service here at Inspire. We just like to say thank you to Pastor Bill Wilson for coming here and just giving us the amazing word of God. If you or a loved one needs prayer, salvation, or baptism, please, please, please make sure that you're putting in the information on the screen there because we would love to have that done for you. Also, if you guys want to join our daily text devotionals, make sure that you're putting in that information on the screen as well. I mean, how many people get the opportunity to get an amazing word from their pastor on a Sunday and then get another word every morning when they wake up through the week. Only here at Inspire, so please make sure that you're getting involved in that. Also, if you guys have not been a part of one of our Inspire groups, here at Inspire, it is important that we get you guys into one of those communities so we can have you guys fellowship with people that are around your age or people who have the same interests as you. So if you guys are interested in that, make sure that you go to our website at inspirechurchhouston.com to get registered for those. And for our Spanish speakers, we have not forgot about y'all. We still have service today at 2 o'clock p.m., so please make sure that y'all make it to that. And for our Spanish speakers, and last but not least, for our young adults, make sure that you're here at 6 o'clock p.m. in the Cafe and Inspire. We would love to see you guys there. See you guys soon. I'm just going to pray us out. God, thank you for this day, and thank you for giving us another opportunity to get an amazing word from uh, Bill Wilson. I ask you to just be with us, move with us, and walk with us through the rest of our day and the rest of our lives. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. All right, guys, we're going to see y'all next week. Thank you. Have a rest of the great rest of the day.